Now, if it's the last days, and we're talking about a picture of a last day church in Laodicea, there's just a couple of verses I want to mention, which we've mentioned many times before, I'm sure. Jesus taught in Matthew 24. In Matthew 24, his disciples come and they say to him, tell us, what will be the signs of your coming and the end of the age? So they're specifically asking him about the end times. And one of the things he says is that there will be a great apostasy, a great falling away. You can't fall away from some place you aren't at. Okay? If you want to fall off the Empire State Building, then you've got to be at the Empire State Building. If you're going to fall away from Christianity, you have to have been there. The same thing in 2 Thessalonians, when Paul writes to the church there, he talks about a great apostasy. Before the Antichrist, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, there will be a great apostasy, a great falling away. Now, I know that a lot of, a lot of Christians, a lot of denominations teach that you can't fall away. Well, they're just simply, I'm going to say they're simply wrong, okay? It's very, very clear if you go to John chapter 6, when it says many of his disciples, not many of the just hangers on or just followers, it says many of his disciples were no longer following Jesus. They chose to walk away from him because his word was too difficult. That's apostasy. All right? So if we look at the church of Laodicea, and the reason why I asked about church in the first place is, is it a church? Let's talk about, is it, is it, or is it just an assembly? It can be, it can, you know, it is an assembly, but it can be focused on Jesus or not focused on Jesus. An assembly of people, listen, you go to, this weekend as we're filming this, uh, this is Super Bowl weekend, a lot of people are gonna be assembled. A lot of people, tens of thousands of people are gonna be assembled in a football stadium, thousands of people around the country, around the world, are assembled in homes, watching. They are not assembled on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are assemblies, they're not church, okay? With me so far? Absolutely. Okay. So, I, I always had a problem with, uh, and I want to I want to be filled with God's grace. All right. The church at of the Galatians, for example. Jesus said, "Don't you call a brother foolish?" Right. Back in the Sermon on the Mount. Yet Paul says to the Galatians, "He said, oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you?'" That's a strong statement. Yes, it is. Very strong. That's oh. an incredibly strong statement. And I'm thinking to myself, is this really a church? Because Paul is saying, you have turned your back on the cross of Jesus Christ. You're trusting what you began in the spirit, now you're trying to complete in the flesh. You've turned your back on the work of Jesus Christ and trusting in your own work. That's what he says to them. And he says, if you don't repent of that now, Christ Jesus will no longer be of any use to you. What he's saying is, if you don't repent of this, you're not saved. You're not Christian. You don't have that relationship with God the Father through the atoning work of Jesus Christ. So now we come to the church of Laodicea, and I'm sitting here thinking, what do you mean church? What do you mean church? Yes, it's an assembly. If the focus is Jesus Christ, if... If you come together on Sunday to watch a football game and you're not a church, but you come together on Sunday to focus on Jesus Christ and you are a church, mm -hmm. the difference is Jesus Christ. Absolutely. When the focus is Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, Jesus Christ shows up. Aha! Aha! Because so the focus wasn't on Jesus right. Christ. So, what makes the difference is the presence of Jesus Christ. He says, with two more gathered in my name, right? I'll be there. Right. It is about the presence of Jesus Christ. Well, the church of Laodicea, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's outside. 
If he's outside, and he's he can't be inside, he's not inside. This is a church that he literally says, or it's an assembly of, of people, that he literally says, you make me sick to my stomach. What does it mean I'll vomit you out of my mouth? I mean, what an, what an incredible thing. The goal, I, I, I talked about this so much, you know, I want, I want to be successful. You can go to a lot of churches this weekend and they'll teach you about success and they'll miss the mark entirely. Not your mark. And because, because the goal is to be pleasing to God. Then you hear on that day that you encounter him, that you come to him face to face and he says, well done, a good and faithful servant. You pleased God. All right? What happens when you don't please God? He says, then he says, depart from me, you Lord, I never knew you. No matter how religious you were. In Matthew chapter 7, he says, many will come to him on that day. Not, not a few. He says, many will come to him on that day saying, Lord, Lord, look what we did in your name. I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. And he says, depart from me, you evil ones, I never knew you. Because again, the focus is not on Jesus. The focus is on self.